Welcome to this week's Your Evolution episode. The aim of the episode this week is to help destigmatise plant medicines here in Scotland, but also across the world as well. And what better way to support the destigmatisation of plant medicines and psychedelics than talking to one of the founding members of the Thank You Plant Medicine movement, which is a global gratitude movement that looks to help destigmatise plant medicine use within society. David Grillo tells us about his hope for the Thank You Plant Medicine movement and also shares his views on the potential for plant medicines and psychedelics to become more integrated into societies across the world. But we also look at the re-emergence of plant medicine and ancestral knowledge here in Scotland. We go out and we've talked to a couple of guys who've been in the Amazon jungle working with healers and indigenous people to learn about these amazing medicines and coming back to Scotland and bringing some of that wisdom with them. And we also look at the potential for plant medicines to help people here in Scotland overcome challenges such as mental health problems, physical health problems and dysfunction that's plagued the country for generations. This episode is to celebrate plant medicines and from Mark and myself we just wanted to say thank you plant medicine for the work that it's done in the lives of ourselves, for the work that it's done in the lives of many many people around the world. And if you're enjoying the content, there's a whole back catalogue of content around plant medicines, mental health, mindset and many other topics that you can check out on our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe. David Grillo is a Canadian guy living in Costa Rica. He and his friend Jonathan Glazer kickstarted a campaign in 2019 called Thank You Plant Medicine. It began as a small group working to reduce the stigma around psychedelic plant medicines and raise awareness that these are not drugs, they are natural medicines that have been used for healing for thousands of years in cultures all over the world. Thank You Plant Medicine has since exploded into a global grassroots movement that encourages people to come out in unison on February 20th every year and share their personal plant medicine healing stories. We managed to grab an interview with David from Thank You Plant Medicine ahead of this year's big date. So yeah, Thank You Plant Medicine is a movement we created uh, to express gratitude towards plant medicines and psychedelics and to do so in a, in a collective, massive way. So what, what we're doing is we're inviting our, our friends from the, from the mushroom community, from the ayahuasca community, from uh, cannabis, and actually from, from all communities of psychedelics and plant medicines to express their gratitude in unison on February 20th of every year. With, with the goal being to raise awareness and to end the stigma associated with these, uh, these powerful medicines that are, that are misunderstood uh, in the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. There's a fascinating story about how this even came into existence. Please tell me all about it. If, with your permission, I'd like to rewind a little bit to tell you a little bit about what was previously going on in my life so you get the full context yeah. of the story. Please I think it's a beautiful beautiful how it developed. I, uh, a few years ago, I, I created a, a kind of social network where people could help each other for free through it. It was called Karma Tribe. It was like a, a gifting economy where you get good vibes points when you help someone out and you get to have a reputation on it. And I, and I, and I thought that this was my, 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 my purpose in life was, it was this, this project and I devoted five years to it and it grew to be in over 60 countries. And I put in so much like blood, sweat and tears into it. And then suddenly I had to shut it down it kind of, uh, kind of suddenly in January, 2019. Um, 
because hackers uh, came into it and started messaging everyone. And I looked in my bank account and my bank account was empty. I shut down my project and suddenly I felt myself in a, in a real pit of, of existential sadness and feeling like I had just amputated my left arm because this was my baby, you know, my big mm -hmm. project. Um, so in that context, I was invited to come try ayahuasca, which uh, admittedly I had never had much interest in before that. I didn't know that much about it. It sounded like a, a pretty scary thing. But the friend who invited me is a friend that I trust. And I said, all right, you know, maybe this is a good time. I'm kind of like in despair right now. Like maybe I'll give it a try. So I went to an ayahuasca ceremony in, uh, in the mountains of Costa Rica. And I had a, a, an extraordinary experience and which, you know, I could speak at length about, uh, you know how it is. But uh, the main thing was that I saw so much light inside of myself and saw so much potential and realized like there was nothing to be sad about. I was just getting started in what I could accomplish for the world. And so a new belief in myself was born. That is, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's the little extra belief in yourself that can really make a difference in those 50, 50 situations where you're thinking about whether to go for it or not. And so months later I had a, such a, a, a kind of a, a pivotal moment of having like a 50, 50 opportunity, which I decided to go for, which led to the, to the creation of thank you plant medicine. So uh, after the ceremony, I then began participating in every ceremony that I heard of in, uh, in Costa Rica and uh, attended, uh, you know, a dozen or so ceremonies each time learning more about myself, like shedding layers of trauma and realizing, you know, uh, issues that I have that I, that I had never really w wanted to address. Uh, so then then my friend John and I decided to go to the World Ayahuasca Conference in Spain because we were so enthused by what we were seeing this medicine doing to us and doing to, to, our, to the participants of the ceremonies we were going to. We were like, this is an amazing thing. Let's go to this conference and see what we might be able to contribute to this community and, and to learn and to connect with people. So we flew to Spain, also somewhat spontaneously, and... The event was extraordinary. It was just beautiful, fantastic. There were people from all around the world uh, and we soaked in all the information and we got to meet people like Dennis McKenna and different indigenous leaders and all these interesting people. And it was just such a rich experience. And on the last day, we found ourselves in... So... Uh, we found ourselves in a little room with Rick Doblin, the, the, the founder of MAPS. Uh, and if, if, if any of you watching have not heard of MAPS, they're like the most, the biggest, most significant nonprofit for advancing psychedelics uh, uh, with research and bring it into the mainstream. And they're developing MDMA for, for, uh, for treatment resistant PTSD and they're on the brink of getting it approved with the FDA. So this guy is a real hero of, of bringing psychedelics into the mainstream. So it was a privilege to be in a conversation with him and a few other leaders of different uh, retreats and organizations. And he was saying that the main barrier to psychedelics and plant medicines being available is the, is the culture, the culture of stigma. Meanwhile, as he's saying this, an idea was starting to be born in my head because I was thinking of, so, so I put up my hand, which, you know, which maybe I wouldn't have done before this new, you know, belief in myself. And I put up my hand and I said, guys, what do you think of this idea? Like we've seen with the Me Too movement, how, it started with one woman sharing her story and inviting others to do the same. And it exploded to having like 3 million stories shared within, within 24 hours. 
and that ended up having enormous repercussions throughout throughout the world throughout legislation with you know predators in high positions being fired you know discussions in the united nations and it had huge repercussions and it all started with sharing a story what if we were to do a similar thing of of creating a, a kind of a coordinated viral online movement of people sharing their stories in unison uh, about how they've benefited from plant medicines or psychedelics, maybe that could take social media by storm and create a cultural shift um, that, we're, that we're seeking. And uh, Rick Dobbin was like, you know, that's a very interesting idea. Like, I really like that idea. And, and the others in the room were like, you know, this is a, this is a cool idea. And then we went down to the main hall for the final talk of the conference. And it was a talk on ayahuasca and the future of society. Throughout the talk, I was a little bit stewing because there was no concrete action proposed in the talk. It was just different philosophical reflections about how we can work together more and integrate the teachings of the medicine and be patient and stuff. But there was no concrete action. And at the end of the talk, they were like, okay, we have 10 minutes for questions before the uh, closing ceremony. And I kind of elbowed my friend John in the ribs and I said, maybe I should go and uh, propose this idea because it would be a concrete action. It would be a timely moment for it. And he said, uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Go for it. And I said, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if, the, if this is really the right time and maybe we should get it a little bit more ready first. And he's like, no, go, go, go. And this is a hall with like a thousand people you know, everyone from the conference was there and therapists and shamans and scientists and all kinds of people. Um, so in a recent, just like an hour ago, in a recent discussion with the MAPS people and the Chakuna people, we thought it might be an interesting idea to get maybe a hundred or even a thousand people to kind of uh, sign up together to all come out on social media about how psychedelics have positively changed their life on one specific day. And this could be an action that would, it's a concrete action that would really move forward the kind of raising awareness about the power of the plants. So if anyone would like to give me their contact information in the next 15 minutes, I'll be over here and we'll organize this. I was thinking maybe for February 20th, 2020, a mass coming out on social media, everyone with their story will think of a good uh, hashtag. So just a suggestion. And then, to my surprise, people started uh, kind of uh, milling down uh, the room. And even from the upper balconies, people were throwing me their business cards and being like, dude, this is a great idea. And people coming up to me like, I've been working with the medicine for 13 years, and I haven't even told my brother and sister about it. And it's time, you know, what better time than now? I'm behind you, and my, my organization is behind you. And someone else saying like, I had the same idea this year. Oh, my God, I had the same idea. Like, let's do this. So it got validated instantaneously and, and it was like a chills running up your spine kind of, kind of moment. And then, so we came back to Costa Rica and we made a video and we, we, we said, guys, we need 35 volunteers to accomplish this. And then within a week we had a hundred volunteers sign up people from, I think 48 countries signed up as volunteers. And we had, I think over 900 people fill out our volunteer form. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was challenging to to get to suddenly get organized, and I mean, I also have a job uh, <laughs> that takes up quite a bit of my time, and so does my friend John. But we we somehow tried to organize all these volunteers into teams and create you know task force for different areas. By the time the twentieth came around, we had like I think a, I think one hundred and fifty partnering organizations. Uh, oh. And it was just really cool. Mark, you were a part of it. Like we were allied with like Psychedelic Society of France, Psychedelic Society of Denmark, Psychedelic Society of the United Kingdom, Psychedelic Society of Estonia, Psychedelic Society of, you know, Ireland. And like just so, so on the, on the 20th, uh, we, we, we weren't able to really count exactly how many stories came out. We, we estimate between five and 10,000 stories were shared on that day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had events in 29 cities in from, uh, you know, Copenhagen to Medellin to San Francisco to New York 
to Asheville, North Carolina, to Vancouver, to, you know, so, so it, it created a, a, a boom of gratitude in, in its own right. And we decided like, we're going to do this year after year and try to grow it. And we're, we're seeing already that psychedelics and, uh, and plant medicines are getting further acceptance into the mainstream as the science is starting to reveal mm. the astonishing results uh, with terminally, terminally ill people, with treatment resistant PTSD, with chronic depression, with other, also other chronic, you know, skin diseases and stuff. It's showing remarkable results. So certain celebrities are starting to come out. So we're, to a certain extent, we're riding a wave that's already surging and we're trying to, we're trying to uh, create a kind of a communication based on gratitude and, uh, and, and loving energy. This is Patrick, a guy who lives near Glasgow, but he has spent a lot of time working with tribes in the Amazon jungle, learning about plant medicines. Patrick has had some serious struggles in life that are all too common in Scotland. He used plant medicines to completely transform his life and gained a much deeper understanding about his past difficulties and why our society as a whole experiences so much pain. Here Patrick shares his fascinating backstory. I think with, I think with a lot of people, my, my journey, or my first journey with uh, what we would call plant medicines now, but you know, they were just mushrooms to me then, um, was as a very young man. Um, and I think for a lot of people, it was just a way of getting it out of my head. You know, I had no idea um, about any of them. Um, you know, it was just take as many as you could, get completely out your nut. Uh, and, and that was my experience, you know, it was about, it was about checking out of how I felt. Um, I didn't feel good. Uh, I hadn't felt good most of my life. Um, and when I look back with hindsight, you know, uh, my life had just been about checking out of my life, you know, whether it was with people or, or places or, 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 or substances, you know, I just checked out of how I felt as regularly as possible. And, and mushrooms were part of that for me initially. Um, Medicine work for me today is a completely different thing. It's actually about checking in with how I feel. Uh, and I don't feel there's uh, anything like it for, for truly checking in um, with how I feel. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the, the wounds I received as a child and a lot of the wounds that I've, a lot of the things that I've, situations that I've put myself in in my life, uh, I've blanked a lot of them out, you know, they're, they're, they're implicit memories, they're subconscious. Uh, and, and these medicines uh, help me to release that from the subconscious and, and make it conscious. Uh, and, and when it's done in a ceremonial setting, it helps me change how I feel about those things. And um, again, there's nothing like that. Uh, believe me, I've been, I've been through the mill. Um, seeing all sorts of professionals, professionals from, from a very young age and telling them the same bloody story and getting the same response, which was medication, which dulled how I felt. Uh, it certainly didn't bring the cause of uh, how I was feeling so negatively in, into my conscious and, and, and make that visible to me. And then, uh, you know, help, help me heal through that. Yeah. You've talked with a lot of respect in terms of how you treat the medicines now. How did you get that respect? It'd be good to hear about your stories in terms of going out to, to the Amazon and some of the work you've done there. I think, I think with, with anything, you know, uh, we have to be shown things. We have to be shown things with people with experience, you know, you don't, you don't just pick up a new skill. Uh, like that, you know, uh, loving myself, for instance, is a skill I've had to learn. Uh, and that's meant that I've had to surround myself with people who are good at that. Um, the, the people, uh, the people around me when I was 
when I was when I was when I was younger struggled with that. You know, my my my, my father's answer to how he felt him, felt about himself was alcohol, uh, and he never he never ever learned anything else. You know, it eventually killed him. Uh, eventually, uh, th I, I mean, I came through abstinent twelve step recovery for a, for a number of years. Um, like anything I've done in my life, I've 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 done it. I mean, I I read everything that you could read on addiction, and um, eventually, in learning about you know my own personal problems and the problems of the world, I, I learned that you know people had been working with a solution for this problem for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, I actually, I was talking to my mom about this, and I I think I remember reading about it in an encyclopedia. Shamans, you know, I've always known that word shaman. Um, and so eventually, you know, I, I took myself off uh, to the Amazon and uh, I, w I had the, the real privilege of working with some wonderful Shibibo healers in the Amazon. Um, but then I, then I joined a community of, of, of gringos, of Westerners, who had been working with these same healers for, for, a, for a long time. Uh, and they incorporated ceremony into everything that they did. You know, everything was a ceremony. There was a, this thing that I hated as a recovering Roman Catholic family. Uh, you know, grace and all these things that you had to do before or after dinner. You know, I hated all that. Uh, it's now something that I like to do. You know, I'm, I'm reclaiming that back for myself. You know, thank, giving thanks for the, for the food that I'm about to eat or the people I'm about to eat it with. Mark John Brown is a guy from Edinburgh who has been on a shamanic path ever since he first hitchhiked around South America when he was aged 18. Mark ended up in Peru, where he began learning about plant medicines from shamans and indigenous people. Having worked deeply with ayahuasca for the past decade and studying healing traditions in the Amazon jungle, Mark is one of the most knowledgeable people in Scotland when it comes to plant medicines. The last time I was down there in the jungle with my maestro, just one-on-one -on -one with him in his little jungle hut working with ayahuasca, just me and him, uh, was end of March 2020, right? Um, so pretty recently, you know, less than a year ago, much less than a year ago. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, we, 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 um, it is of great importance to me, part of my, um, my, um, uh, reason for you know wanting to 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 being on the path of ethnobotany as well as developing myself in shamanism is to help is to well to, to continue doing what we're doing now which is take westerners across there to to experience the local cultures um <clears throat> you know and to really like get a behind the scenes look into like the truths and the wisdom that that these people hold right um so yeah that, that that's a massive a massive part of 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 my life um and in terms of you know uh ritual i mean ritual is their life you know like uh because they are animistic by default Anim animism animism is a way of being in a way a perspective of viewing the world that is so intrinsic with the environment that surrounds you it's so immersed in the environment that surrounds you that sees no separation from between you and what is around you and just lives and breathes and exists as the symbiotic uh, part in, in intrinsic symbiotic part of existence, right? So ritual per se is life for them. Obviously you've been all around the world and you've had all the experiences of working with <clears throat> ayahuasca and other psychedelics as well mm. we seem to be pretty far behind uh, other countries when it comes to to these medicines and the potential healing benefits of them what's your what's your viewpoint on that there there therein lies another one of my big driving forces for becoming officially an ethnobotanist right so that i can give a greater voice to this because i agree with you from the perspective of legality, legalization um, of these, you know, sacred practices, for sure, I agree, we are. It seems, it, sometimes it feels like decades behind, you know, like you've got, you see certain states over in the USA that are legalizing things left, right and center. 
um, you know, marijuana legalized in X state, Y state, you know, and uh, there are there are actually I think three lineages of ayahuasca churches which can legally practice uh, ayahuasca ceremonies over there as well, and um, for sure I I I, I agree. You know, in terms of legislation and, you know, um, officialdom, if that's what you want to call it, for sure we are behind. And in terms of, um, you know, culturally and, and, and on, a, on a societal, cultural, sociocultural like, level, uh, yeah, we are, we're not, we're not behind in, in that we know about it, but in in being able to in developing ways that truly serve us rather than gain old joke a, a phone to get a hadu these the, the mushrooms that I'm gonna swally in my living room on Friday night, you know? And and, and that guy might tan a couple of cans of tenants before having those mushrooms, you know, and maybe even eat a chippy the next day. You know what I mean? Like that from that perspective <laughs> We, I think that we're 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 behind, um, for sure. Um, but again, that 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 is remedied through connection. And I think actually, see, to be honest with you, I think the probably one of the biggest cornerstones of human healing is connection, right? A human breakthrough. It is connection, and um, and we've just become really disconnected from our own land and from our own traditions and from our own plants, you know, from our own identity, right? I mean, for, you know, there's many arguments as to why, right? Um, <laughs> no point in any elbows, England, <laughs> um, right? But um, but uh, that's, I think that's at the core of it, you know? And, it, and it's taken me, I mean, I had to go away out there to the Amazon jungle to somehow follow the breadcrumbs back to find my way back to my own culture and go, wow, like this has got some serious medicine as well. Okay. It's not, you know, it's not my, it's not the path that's chosen me in this lifetime. Um, cause I'm, I'm an, I'm an ayahuasquero through and through, right. I have been for 12 years, but, but the appreciation that I'm able to have for it and the guidance that I'm able, able to give my fellow Scots, back to their own their own traditions of of course i have my my intrinsic person like for personal purposes connection with my own land with my own plants right and i can help other people to 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 find their way in that um but i think that that's that's what makes us so the the the, the behindness is just synonymous of disconnection i suppose some of them will be illegal i suppose at the moment but legal legalities aside you know like you know, the, what are some of the medicines that, that, that maybe were part of our culture here, that, you know, the, that ancient wisdom that we've forgotten about? The Druids were massively, uh, you know, connected with psilocybin mushrooms. And I believe the Picts as well, which are pre-Druid, the Picts are pre-Druid, Pictish people. Um, you know, I believe they had a really, uh, like, strong connection with the psilocybin mushroom. And, uh, you know across Druid and Norse, uh, ancient Norse culture, the golden teacher mushroom is, is such an intrinsic part. You've touched on a little bit about the dysfunction probably that you experienced as a young man growing up here in Scotland. And I'm sure many people out there can, can relate to that, you know, and I think if the, the facts don't lie. Scotland has one of the worst mental health problems, one of the worst addiction problems, one of the worst suicide problems. We're a country that is at a crossroads, I believe. Where do these medicines fit into that and your experience? Well, before I left for Peru and you know, there's there's quite a bit of this stuff going on in the, the recovery community, you know, where we, there was a movie by Jamie Redford called Resilience, which was all about adverse child experiences. We were talking about it um, briefly. Uh, 
and you're right, Scotland has uh, a really large uh, lot of adverse child experiences and these, these can be categorised as a million different things but the top 10 which were used in the study were were you physically, emotionally or sexually abused? Were you physically, emotionally neglected? Was one of your parents an alcoholic? Uh, did they split up? Did you witness violence? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I, I, I found myself giving a few talks on that. I had a screening of the film. Um, you know, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a movement. It was something that was happening in Scotland and we were raising awareness and that was wonderful, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler for words and, you know, adversity uh, literally translates to the prevention of development. Um, and what I've discovered is that really what we're talking about when we're talking about people with high A scores or people who've experienced a lot of what we call adversity in their lives um, is that they have had problems uh, emotionally. Uh, and, and, and all of that down is down to the adversity being the prevention of brain development. Um, and for me, what all of these medicines are, whether it be ayahuasca or magic mushrooms or whatever it is that you're using, they are all brain medicines. Um, ayahuasca is quite unusual because uh, it's a gut brain medicine as well. You know, a, a lot of the healing happens, a lot of the trauma is stored in the gut. Uh, our, you know, or the disconnection from our gut feelings, um, and and energetically, the the release can come uh, through purging, while having a head full of dimethyltryptamine. Uh, sometimes these uh, visions that you're having are are subconscious memories which are coming out. I mean, it's 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 a it's a way of cleaning the body uh, like no other. Uh, and redeveloping that brain. Um, I, I know from personal experience, uh, I, I was someone that struggled uh, to experience love in my body. Um, I just didn't know what people were talking. I, you know, I, I literally like I had very little pull to the to the people and the, the, that I was close with in my, in my life including my including my daughter you know I could spend time with my daughter and just not feel what everyone else was talking about you know doting on them I just didn't my brain didn't work that way and um, I had worked it all out intellectually unless there was an exchange or you know I I, I didn't know what relationship was for because there was no internal drive towards that that love that you know, holds homo sapiens together. It's why we're here. It's why we've survived so long. This love, this that we have for each other, for one another, you know. Uh, and it wasn't until I did some quite serious work with uh, a DMT-based endorphin medicine and blasted open that system. Uh, and you know, two weeks later, I was looking at pictures that I'd collected in my phone of of my my, my child and never really had any connection to it. And I'm just <laughs> just fall in bits with love, you know, and then, <laughs> then wondering what everyone else was complaining about, you know, you navigating the world with these feelings, you know, these natural feelings towards how you're meant to behave and act. I never had any of that, you know, I never had any of that. And so what does, what is the potential for specific brain medicine in a country that's experiencing brain developmental trauma? I mean, it's not, rocket science um, it's really not rocket science um, we have very specific uh, brain medication that's been used for thousands of years in cultures all over the world um, that's illegal in a country that needs it the most I mean what's going on um, and you know you can get angry about that or, or you can do what, what you're doing and, and that's trying to educate people on this. You know, there was an obscene propaganda campaign um, that came with the war on drugs. Um, and most of the evidence, most of the information was false. And, you know, that means that our parents were, were brought up in that generation. And, you know, it's some, of, some of the, 
that, that's, that's the people that we can start by explaining this stuff to, you know, because they vote. <laughs> We're needing change. We are desperately needing change in Scotland. Uh, it's not acceptable how many young people are dying, how many young people, because I know, I know from personal experience what brings you to those feelings, you know, of suicide. I mean, that's not a nice state to be in. That's not a nice place to be in. And that wasn't just something that happened overnight. That was a progression from feeling very, from, from when I was very young and, and to, to a point where I was at the end. One, one thing that you mentioned before, which really struck a chord with me, was about how, when it comes to our own and our own ancestral medicines, like the mushrooms, for instance, about how like how our bodies remember, about how like, that tradition hasn't been forgotten on a genetic level, and that there's some connection that we still have with these medicines and it's funny we just done a documentary on psilocybin and we had a psychedelic uh, integration coach come on and, and talk about mushrooms and she spoke a little bit about how she connected with the mushrooms and uh, she talked a little bit about how the mushrooms had shared this wisdom about the fact that our ancestors had actually used these mushrooms and used them to heal and they were big they were a big part and the, the culture at the time but now it's kind of been forgotten and she spoke about that as well and it made me think of you because you were the first person who said that to me uh, before and it really struck a chord it really stuck with me because I think it's very interesting and that the medicines themselves perhaps are going to be the thing that open up open people up to the idea of this ancestral wisdom that's already waiting to be discovered or rediscovered almost that runs through our blood my man like there's no escaping it there's no escaping it, you know. Uh, ayahuasca, for example, will take you to your soul level lineage, as in your spiritual level lineage. She can take you to your soul or she can take you through your DNA. The, uh, the meeting point of those two, I've yet to discover, right? But I, I just witnessed it from 12 years of working with these medicines. These are, the, these are the two lineages that she's able to show you, right? And it is so common, like it is far far from uncommon for me to witness people coming into ayahuasca ceremonies and going fuck like i was taken you know uh, one of one of my guys recently a, a half iranian guy was like man i was taken through like iran and uh, like shown all the colors of ancient persia and i could hear the tongues being spoken and you know and i was like yeah yeah because that's what she does right she takes you through your dna she takes you deep into your DNA and runs you through your very own roots. And so if we've got, uh, you cannot get away from it, man. There's, you just simply can't get, genetics are information. They pass through generation to generation to generation. If we go far enough deep, 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 deep into our DNA, we'll remember all those traditions, all of it. Have no doubt. What are some of the profound uh, benefits that you've experienced personally from, from the work you've done you know, directly or just working around people who have been using plant medicines? Yeah, a real strong sense of self. Uh, so much so that, you know, um, well, people are sometimes just like, fuck, like, you know, like, this guy literally just does not give a fuck. Like, you know, he's just like, so him. And, and nothing will, will stop him from being him, you know. But at the same time, what it's also brought me is uh, the emotional intelligence and the capacity to tune in to the needs of, of, of people in my environment, you know, so that I can uh, cultivate really healthy relationships as well, right? So two ends of that spectrum, like a real strong sense of self and like nothing like taking me off of my path or, or deviating me or distracting me or what, you know what, anything like that. Um, and, and also the capacity to feel people really, really deeply and build some really quality uh, relationships. Uh, those are two primary things that, um, yeah, working with these plants have brought me. Uh, also just an intrinsic just a recognition of my intrinsic connection with all of nature.
people post on their social media about compassion and love and all these things. What if your brain isn't organized? What if your brain isn't working right? You know? What if you're not able to experience that? It doesn't matter how much meditation you do or how, how long you stop using drugs for. What if you're working from, you know, with both your hands tight behind your back? Um, because, I mean, I've been very fortunate to to go and work with some of the most wonderful healers on the planet, but not everybody has that option. You know, it's not, even, not even everybody has the option to to go to Spain or Portugal or somewhere closer to do these things. It's expensive. It's, it's, it's healing and 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 self care seems to be such an expensive uh, thing in our culture. You know, it's um, bizarre. Again, in a country that needs it most, the integration of plant medicine happens. In, 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 in the Amazon happens back in the community. They go back into reasonably healthy communities after they've done their medicine work. You know, whereas the ayahuasca tourism is people flying all over, going two weeks of ceremonies and then they're off traveling. And, and I wouldn't have been able to integrate the medicine work that I do now and continue to do now unless I had learned to outsource um, elders and um, people that I could talk to with more emotional intelligence than I did about things that are coming up in my life um, and the more and more I learn about what's wrong in our culture the more and more I, I find out that it's actually quite easy to fix uh, you know we need to have communities of people around us and I don't just mean a, a community of barefoot hippies living in Portugal drinking ayahuasca and you know dancing all night I don't, I don't mean that I mean we need to have healthy communities that are that are designed uh, through millions of years of evolution to support our children's brain development. Uh, and, and for me, that means having, for me as a, a 39 year old man, having adults that I can talk to about my feelings that are emotionally more developed than I am, that are able to then guide me through any problems that I might be having so that I can then guide my children through those same problems that they're gonna have. Um, I learned to do that in 12-step recovery stuff. You know, I learned that I needed to have men, older men in my life that I could go to with problems that I was having. So medicine work, although uh, it facilitates the bringing up of stuff that I might need to then uh, outsource to my community and to, to, to help heal as a group of humans rather than just a, as an individual, um, Medicine work for, for anyone that I've met that's doing it seriously is always integrating themselves back into the nature that they are. You know, they're, they're taking themselves out of the cities as much as possible, if that's where they're from. They're getting themselves out on hill walks, they're getting themselves out in the nature, they're reconnecting with the nature that they are. Medicine work for me has been the most important part of uh, allowing me to realise that I am part of nature. I'm not this separate entity that I seemed to think I was for a long time and that nature was just something that I took from uh, or, you know, abused in some way, you know, or, 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 or used for my enjoyment. Uh, I didn't realise that I was all of those things. You know, we were talking uh, and anybody that anybody that I've met that's seriously doing medicine work has really reevaluated where they're living, how they're living. Um, you know, their connection with their food, their connection with their resources. Uh, medicine work always seems to point in that direction of less, uh, more equilibrium with the environment, more biodiversity, uh, or being part of a, a healthy bio, biodiverse system. Um, and it's interesting that, because, you know, we were, we were talking about um, some sort of psychedelic people, you know, Terence McKenna once hypothesized that the microdosing of magic mushrooms could have led to the prefrontal cortex expansion of the human brain. Uh, you know, the stoned ape theory, uh, which everyone sort of like, you know, likes to talk about. But if he's right about that, and it looks like he is with regards to what the neuroscience is saying about microdosing and mushrooms, um, then what if 
not only is medicine work a wonderful way for us to heal our individual uh, problems, um, what if it's necessary for human beings to remain balanced? For me, I think plant medicines are a lot more important than just our individual recovery, but um, I think they're essential for the human being to be balanced on this planet. You know, I think they're that important.